we'll do cash receipts. A couple ways of doing that. If we go to our cash management, we do have a cash receipt journal and a deposit. Now, the difference between these two, and really it depends on how you mostly receive um, payments from your customers. A deposit is a deposit slip. You, know, you get a bunch of checks, you're filling out a deposit slip, and you're going to take those checks to the bank. For bank reconciliation purposes, you want that to show up as one number. And now it's for multiple customers. In that case, we would use the deposit. And I'll, I'll, we're gonna, I'm going to go back. I'm going to use the cash receipt journal in this, this example. But if we just look at the deposit screen, we'll see structured. You can imagine having that physical deposit slip in front of you. The total of the deposit slip and then down below the individual checks that I've collected from either customers or, you know, if employees are really need to pay something back or just miscellaneous cash. Right. But what it will allow is that the bank statement will see when we do a bank rec, it makes it easier because then we can just see one number on the bank reconciliation as opposed to each check individually. And then behind that, we can expand and collapse to see that. So if you do have a lot of that, there is a function for kind of a virtual deposit slip in the system. And we're going to go cash receipt journal. The way to go ahead and receive cash is through a special journal, in this case, or a cash receipt journal. And we'll just use the default journal we have here. So we get through it, you know, we're saying we're receiving a payment. When we come through to the account type, this is where we select what is who's giving us the payment. And right? so we're going to we can get a refund from a vendor this way as well. And right? so if a vendor sends you cash back, we can say, well, we're getting that back in from a vendor and it'll impact the vendor record. In our case, we're going to go through, select our customer that sent us our payment. We can select who that customer is. Let's say, I don't know what the invoices are out there. So I'm going to go ahead and select an invoice first. You could put the amount in first, or in my case, let's say they paid this invoice off at a really late. You can see once I've selected that invoice, it will automatically put that amount in for me. All right, so if it's one invoice and you want to save yourself some typing, you can select the invoice and have that default. You can also change the amount here. That, so if they short paid you, that's fine as well. If they're paying in, in pieces, you can adjust the amount paid against that invoice and it will leave the remaining amount open until it's either fully paid or you credit uh, the balance off. Our balancing account here, we can select the GL account. More than likely, you'll want to put that into a bank account. That is, of course, linked to your general ledger, but again, updating a subledger record for your checkbook as well. And then we have an individual cash receipt. On your bank statement, just slightly different than what we talked about with the deposit, is that this would show up as a line on your bank statement in Business Central, as opposed to a deposit that might be grouped. So again, just two different ways of doing it depending on how the, how the, the payment was made. Uh, to you from the customer.